Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're going to be talking about 10 ready to wear outfits um, to make for spring. So um, 10 spring outfits that I have kind of um, pulled a little bit um, and that I'm giving you pattern and fabric ideas if you want to recreate those on your own. Um, we have skipped over the winter <laughs> looks to recreate only because I'm trying to get ahead of myself. I'm trying to get not a season ahead, but like enough before the upcoming season that people have enough time if you want to, to make things up. Um, which is why my spring capsule plans will be coming out in a couple of weeks as well. So I decided in order to get ahead of things, skip this, the winter, and <laughs> we're just going to move right on into spring. It is an absolute nasty day outside. It is so very gray, um, which is why I'm wearing bright color. And I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of my um, style leanings a little bit towards spring. Um, we'll chat just a little bit today. Um, but before we get into that, today is Friday, which means we do have a Love Notions feature Friday pattern. And today it is the Vivace uh, Dolman. This is a top, tunic, and dress. Um, I have made it a couple of times, um, and actually I made the, <clears throat> sorry, and I'm also, my voice has been very scratchy, and I don't know why, <laughs> for like, it sounds like I'm sick, and I'm not. I'm, I'm absolutely fine, so I don't know what's happening, but um, I had made it a couple of times. I made it as a woven dress. The pattern can be made in wovens and knits. I've made a woven dress and a knit top. I ended up cutting the um, dr woven dress off into a top because it shrunk and got really short in the wash. Um, so I just cut it off into a top, wear both of them. It's a fabulous pattern. Um, you just need a little fabric with some drape and uh, $5 today only. Uh, 10 TKS gets you an additional 10% off that sale price. So definitely go grab that one if, um, yeah, if you don't have that one yet already in your catalog. Okay. These videos always get long, so I kind of just want to dive into them. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about spring. I'm not going to delve too far into like my plans for spring and what, I mean, I'm just going to highlight a few things, um, mostly because I have my spring capsule plans that'll be coming out here in a couple of weeks. I will be doing um, maybe next, uh, probably next week, a um, how I'm wearing my winter capsule. So like uh, a week's worth of outfits, outfit of the day, and we'll be talking a little bit more about my winter capsule wardrobe um, and how that's working for me before we go into my spring capsule plans. But um, yeah, that's kind of um, where we're going with that today. So let's talk a little bit about where I am seeing my spring capsule wardrobe going. Color. <laughs> So I mentioned a little bit last year that I am feeling my style is evolving just a little bit. Um, not completely. Like there's still a lot of elements that um, are carrying over into um, what I would like to continue to see in my wardrobe. But um, it's my my style is becoming just a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more um, casual ish, like a, just a little bit more. Um, I guess I'm realizing that my lifestyle is casual and that, you know, the trousers I make and that sort of thing get worn. They do get worn, but just very infrequently, for instance. Um, I'm still very much drawn to simpler lines, like more classic lines, less uh, frills. And, um, you know, I don't do a lot with um, um, pleats and um, ruffles and things like that on clothing, not a lot of embellishments. Um, I, I go just a little bit more, I mean, I like loud print and that sort of thing, but that's about as far as I go with embellishment um, and details and stuff like that. So yeah, so that definitely is staying the same, but I'm seeing a lot more color in my wardrobe. Also, as I was getting into researching for the spring capsule plans and kind of spring trends and stuff like that, I'm noticing I'm getting more comfortable with um, where I want my own wardrobe to go and how I can maybe pull little bits and pieces of spring trends into my wardrobe um, or fashion trends um, in small doses. But for the most part, like, you know, everyone's wearing, if everyone's wearing beige, <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to, I'm just happier in color. So that is kind of the name of the game for a spring. So things that I'm going to be um, kind of adding to my own wardrobe, a brightly colored striped Breton top. I saw one of these, actually Bowden has a ton of color. Bowden has a ton of color um, right now, as does Ann Taylor. Um, we popped into the, Jenny and I went to the mall just to do a little window shopping, um, some research, and um, Ann Taylor has a ton of color right now. It makes me very happy. Um, and stores are still like on the way out of winter and just starting to get like more spring stuff in. Um, but yes, brightly colored uh, Breton style tops. Um, I definitely want to add at least one of those to my wardrobe, um, maybe a couple. 
Um, I learned to crochet over the Christmas season, and I want to crochet myself a sweater. <laughs> um, I've been playing around with the little, um, the wooble, um, I can never say the word, are, are you, arugami? Mm, that's not correct. Someone will correct me, I'm sure. But the little creatures that get crochet, crocheted, the little stuffies. Um, I made a couple of those with kits over Christmas, and um, I really want to try making a colorful crocheted sweater, whether that's just um, a boxy crocheted sweater or like granny squares. I've not even tried doing granny squares yet. I also have my laptop right here next to me so I can see what you're seeing. Um, I love the idea of a brightly colored jacket, which this one's going to totally fit the bill for spring, um, over more subdued clothing. So over, um, you know, darker dresses or um, things that are just a little bit more neutral um, with that bright pop of color being in the jacket. I'm so glad I've added this one to my wardrobe. Um, it's going to be a great transition piece because to be honest, it does not get warm here in Indiana until, oh, I mean, a lot of times it's still really cool in May. Um, so I will have plenty of opportunity <laughs> to wear this jacket when I'm wanting brighter colors. And, um, and we also have a Typically, it's really rainy here um, in the spring months, like really rainy and gray. Um, in fact, when we first moved here, my husband's like, did we move to Seattle or did we move to Indiana? Um, because it's it, our springs are just very, very gray, and we moved here in, in the springtime. So, And then we have like zero rain for a few months. So I do want to bring in some color um, that way. Um, I am loving my bias um, cut slip skirt. That's a lot of fun, and I'm really excited. At, I need the weather to warm up just a little bit. Um, so that I can wear it bare-legged, but um, I'm excited on uh, pairing that and styling that for the spring months because uh, it's, I mean, technically it's olive, but the shininess of it makes it a little bit brighter green, I think, and um, even though I made it for the Christmas season, I think it's going to be perfect in the uh, spring capsule, and I, I kind of want to do one in a fun print as well. I've got all those beautiful silks that I got both at Mood and in um, Italy that um, might work for a really fun printed skirt, um, or I've got, I mean, I've got tons of fabric in my stash that we can play around with, but I love the idea of a brightly printed bias uh, um, slip skirt um, to, to play around with, um, you know, in the spring as well. And then finally, I would really like to find, I'm not probably going to knit this, but I would really like to find a real loud, like, um, sweater <laughs> that's, um, a print of some sort. Um, again, we were window shopping and Farm Rio, um, we were at Nordstrom Farm Rio has some like really loud sweaters right now. I may buy one. I don't know. They're pretty pricey. Um, we'll see. I may just look around for something. Um, I also bought a book at our library sale, and it is um, British Isle Knits. Uh, and I think it copyright was like late 80s. But there is a sweater vest in there that's the Fair Isle um, knitting that I think would be a lot of fun. I've never done Fair Isle. Um, I've done some color work, but I've never done Fair Isle. But I think that could be a fun way to learn just in a sweater vest because that would go together really easily. Um, and then I can play around with all of the colors because um, I, I think I kind of want a really brightly colored sweater vest maybe in my wardrobe. Um, probably won't happen this spring. But for the future, um, I think that would be a lot of fun to add that to my wardrobe as well. So some kind of really loud sweater. So that's kind of how my aesthetic is going. And you are going to see a lot of color in these 10 looks that I have pulled. But um, hopefully, you know, there's something for everyone here. Okay, let's get into this so that this video doesn't last a million years. Look number one is this beautiful dress. So um, again, I've been watching some of the uh, fashion influencers like people on YouTube, um, their videos on like what to expect for spring and the trends and stuff like that, just, you know, so I can stay current. Um, white dresses were one, like lace, um, sheer things um, was one of them. Metallics was one. Um, dropped waist was one. Um... What else? Anyway, that's kind of it. But um, I just thought that this dress was really, really pretty, and um, it's a great and a fun way to use a border print. So for the pattern on this, I have chosen the Style Arc Trini dress. Um, there's actually an expansion that has come with that that I think you could, um, the sleeveless one that you could use. The neckline is higher on the Trini, but I think that, um, oh wait, no, wait, that's a different one. The neckline is very similar on the Trini to this one. Sorry, that's another dress we'll talk about in a minute. But I think if you added just the ruffle to the um, uh, arm's eye edge, you would have this dress. So it's kind of a um, higher waisted, not really on pier, but a little bit higher waisted. Uh, the Trini just has a straight skirt, but you could totally do um, tiered um, panels instead and gather those in if you wanted to. Uh, and I grabbed this wonderful, um, I think it's viscose. Maybe, it might be cotton lawn. 
I can't remember now, but this beautiful blue and white border print from Mood. Um, I think that this would be beautiful and you can play around with where the dense um, feathers are. Uh, kind of the way that this dress is, like do the dense um, feathers there at the bodice, and then maybe one of the tiers could be the denser um, feathers as well, and then, you know, however you wanted to do that. Or you could just do the regular trinny skirt and have the dense uh, feathers at the bottom going up to the much less dense there at the top. It could be just a lot of fun playing around with that fabric. I'm also talking really fast. I apologize. <laughs> All right, next up is this gal. And I was, number one, um, things that grabbed me about this look, the bias slip skirt. I'm just having so much fun wearing that. Um, it's just such a, a piece that I wasn't expecting to love as much as I do. Um, but I think in a bright color would be absolutely wonderful. And I love that the t-shirt matches the skirt. Now you could absolutely go out, thrift a graphic, graphic tee, um, you know, grab one, of your, you know, of a partner, you know, whoever, wherever you're finding a big oversized graphic tee, if you just have one in your closet already, or if you've got like a cricket or something and you want to put um, something on the front, you could make your own t-shirt. So I have grabbed a pattern and um, fabric for the t-shirt as well. The key to this is oversized. So you want something very big. Um, do not, I would not recommend tucking in a shirt into the bias slip skirt, but they sell, or you could make these things called, um, I got mine on Amazon and it's basically like an elastic band that you put on as kind of like a belt over your oversized sweater or t-shirt. And then you just pull and blouse it out over that piece of elastic. Um, so it looks like the shirt is tucked in when in fact, you're not getting all of the fabric bunched in, especially under those bias slip skirts where every lump and bump shows. Um, within reason. I mean, I don't, I don't wear shapewear under mine and I don't feel like anything is like overly bumpy, but, um, if I had a shirt tucked into it, it definitely would look bumpy. So that's a way you can kind of get around that. For the t-shirt, I have gone with the, uh, Tessuti, um, how are we saying that? Micah, probably. Micah top. It's just an oversized t-shirt pattern. Again, you could thrift one if you wanted to. Um, but this and this, um, beautiful organic, it is a cotton tinsel, I think. Um, t-shirt jersey from Core Fabrics and this beautiful red color. I couldn't find orange, but this beautiful red, it gives you the same feel, same idea. Again, you could put your own like graphic on the front if you wanted to, or you could thrift something in red as well. And for the skirt, I have gone with the um, Stay Stitch Pattern Company's Coco Bias Skirt. This is what I used for my bias skirt um, over the holidays. A wonderful pattern. I actually don't even slow the slit. I don't need to. I made the longer version and I can walk just fine without the slit. So I don't even put the slit in. But the fabric I used was fantastic. It is the um, viscose fluid satin, I think, from Mood. It comes in like 25 different colors. So I've picked this red color um, that you could then recreate the outfit in red instead of orange. Um, but they've got some really fun colors. I mean, basically, they didn't have orange, but <laughs> any other color that you could kind of think that you would want to buy a slip skirt in. And I can say for a fact that this fabric works wonderfully for this pattern. It's because that's the same fabric I used for mine. It's a really good um, combination. All right. The next pattern look three is this absolutely gorgeous dress with these big statement sleeves. Um, this is the one where the neckline is different. <laughs> Um, I loved the sleeves on these. I mean, obviously the fabric is what sings on this. Uh, so I think you could find something with a really beautiful, bold fabric um, to use. And for the pattern, I've actually picked a new to me pattern company at the Petite Dressmaker. Um, I just bought this. This is the Bloomfield dress. I bought this one for my daughter. Uh, and it has an add-on that actually I bought too that where it has an open back. But basically, the original one is this, is this dress. Now, the neckline on this is a little bit higher, which you can play around with. You could do a V or do a bigger scoop if you wanted. Um, that's really easy. You're just redrawing that in however you want, um, you know, it's a very easy thing to do. So you could definitely lower the neckline if you wanted to, um, but choose the view that has that little cutout at the stomach, um, or you don't have to put the cutout at the stomach because there's another view for that if that's your choice. But the big uh, statement sleeves really sing, and then you've got the beautiful skirt. And for the fabric, I have gone with this absolutely gorgeous, I think this is a cotton lawn, um, I'm pretty sure, from the cloth edit in Australia. She's got some beautiful fabric. Uh, I'm, I'm always on there just checking to see like what's new and what she's got um, because she's got some of the most beautiful prints online. 
in her cotton, in her linen, um, in her linen silk blends. I mean, she just has some really beautiful and, um, and fabrics you don't see everywhere else, you know? She's got a lot of that. So I've gone with this one, um, a large scale print, because you could definitely use a large scale print um, on this dress because the pieces are big. So uh, you wouldn't have to worry about things getting too chopped up. All right, look number four is this Veronica Beard look. Um, this is a little bit more um, your typical spring. This is really what we're seeing more in like trendy spring type fashions. Um, a little bit more muted, some pastels, that sort of thing. Um, but I love this look. I think it's very chic. It's very classic. I can see myself wearing this as well. Um, maybe even with some, a bright blazer on top of it, uh, in the spring months or a really fun pair of shoes or bright jewelry or something along those lines. Uh, but for this one, I've actually gone with two itch to stitch patterns for the top. And honestly, I think that this Veronica Beard shirt is what is, was the inspiration behind this pattern. Um, but the new Majorelle top and dress, um, I would do the top for this. And instead of doing the elastic around the sleeve, you could just um, uh, shear the um, kind of a cuff basically there at the bottom if you wanted to, or you could leave it as is if you prefer that um, method. It's easier. The method that Kenneth uses is in the itch to stitch pattern is easier than doing the shearing um, quicker. But um, M or Minerva has some really gorgeous um, tinsel, I think it's a tinsel cotton blend uh, chambray. Um, I've got some in two different colors, but I would totally use that fabric to recreate this denim look shirt, and you would have an absolute complete dupe for this. Um, for the skirt, I have gone with the Itch to Stitch Taroko. Now, it is a shorter, it's an above the knee skirt, so you could just very easily lengthen that to make it midi if you really wanted to look just like this gal. Um, but the style lines are very similar. It's kind of the jean, st jean skirt style with the fly. Um, it's got some cooler pockets and that sort of thing. And I've picked a um, this Minerva denim that I've used before for a pair of shorts for my daughter in the ivory, ivory color, I think is what it was called, not a crew. Um, because this skirt isn't technically white. I mean, you could make white if you wanted, but I think that those two um, combined would make this skirt and you would have, you would have this outfit very easily. All right, next, speaking of sweater vests, <laughs> I love this look. It just makes me so happy. The bright colors, you could wear these separate, you could wear them together. Everything about this look makes me very happy. All right, for the button-up shirt, I mean, you could use any, your favorite button-up shirt pattern, honestly. I've gone with the Liesl & Co. classic shirt. It's what, that's one of my favorite button-up shirt patterns. I have a couple that I've used that I love. Um, but, you know, you could use whichever one you like. But Minerva has this wonderful um, gingham, cotton shirt and gingham, that would be absolutely perfect. Uh, it's the 3 8 inch gingham, so I think it's going to be a similar scale to what the gal is wearing here. Maybe just a little bit smaller, but pretty similar to scale to the gingham shirt that this gal has on here. And then Minerva also sells, and I think it's, oh, no, I can't remember the, it's a designer brand and I can't remember, but this wonderful bright green um, sweater knit. And I would use the Made for Mermaids, um, what's it called, Amber Vest. Um, and it, this is the Amber and Elton Vest is what it's called. So it comes in a few different uh, lengths, but it's got a crew neck line, which you would use if you wanted to totally recreate this, or you could do the V-neck if you wanted. Um, I would do the longer one just because that would be my preference, but um, it has like a cropped, like a high hip maybe, and then like maybe a medium hip. I'd have to look at the pattern, but there's three different lengths um, for the sweater vest. But using that sweater knit from Minerva um, with this pattern, you could have your own little sweater vest uh, for very, you know, very easily, I'm sure it goes together very quickly. Um, and that would be a really fun pop of color to wear this spring, not only over the gingham shirt, but with all sorts of things in your wardrobe. I'm all about, I mean, I know that ink color blocking is kind of not what it was like such a big thing um, a couple years ago, but I'm still, I love a good color blocked moment and I'm still going to rock that. Okay, the next look I have here is a, I think this might be a Zimmerman dress. I can't remember now. Um, I just think it's fun and flirty. Um, obviously, it's a little bit shorter, but um, I think I, um, not, and I'm saying mini very loosely here, especially when it comes to full skirts. Like, those can, like, really come back and bite you here um, very easily. Um, but I think something above the knee can be kind of fun and different. Um, all the midi dresses I've been making recently have been more um, midi length 
or sorry, all the wrap dresses I've been making recently have been more midi length. Um, so I think it would be fun to try some that are a little bit shorter um, with a little bit fuller skirt. So I have gone, um, for the pattern, I have gone with the Cashmere Rose Claire dress. Now, I think this would be perfect with the big statement sleeve, this version that I'm showing you. Um, you could keep the tiers, but just do one, you know, just do the, the first tier and then the second tier and then make that second tier as short as you need um, in order for it to hit wherever you wanted to on your body. I just think that this is such a beautiful wrap dress. And um, with that statement sleeve, you're really um, channeling the the feel of the Zimmerman dress. And for the fabric, I have gone again from Cloth Edit, this beautiful, I think this one is one of her linen silk blends. It may just be a linen. I can't remember. It's either 100% linen or it's one of her linen silk blends. I can't remember what I grabbed here. But it's just a really beautiful, um, kind of more pastel floral. Um, it just, it felt more like this dress than um, some of the other stuff. But you can get kind of that romantic feel um, that Zimmerman dresses are kind of known for um, with that combination of that pattern and that fabric. I think that would be a whole lot of fun to play with. I love the Rose Claire. It's my favorite woven wet wrap dress. <laughs> Okay, this next one is a Farm Rio top, and this is one that Jenny and I saw when we were doing our um, investigative shopping uh, the other day. They had this at Nordstrom's in um, this dusty pink and black and in like an ivory. Um, we just thought it was really cool. It is cropped. You could make it obviously as cropped as you want. It's got a high neck. There was a zipper in the back to get it on and off, um, and then... Um, it had the statement sleeves. Now the black one actually came with like a little bra top you could wear underneath it. Obviously, I mean, I would wear like a actual shirt underneath it, like a tank or a camisole or something along those lines. Um, it was just such a fun statement piece. And again, from what I'm hearing from the style people, the fashion people, uh, lace is um, really in for this upcoming spring. So I have chosen for the top, the, um, uh, Atelier Skimmy Passion Blouse because it's got that high neck. Now, it does not use a zipper. It just uses a keyhole back, which I think might be better for this top anyway. Because um, when I was looking with the zipper, um, they obviously had Gapure lace that was made for this top. And so they just used the finished off edges there at a center back seam. So it finished off the edges of the zipper. Um, so you couldn't really see that because obviously lace can be a little tricky with your seams and stuff. Um, so I think that I would do this blouse where you just have the keyhole opening. It would make finishing things off just a little bit cleaner um, for the materials that we're able to get our hands on. But I picked this one. Now the difference is you would obviously want to crop it. Um, it's a pretty relaxed shirt. It does not have any darts. So that would make it really easy to recreate this shirt as well. It also did not have darts. Um, so you would crop it to whatever length that you wanted it to be cropped. Now you would need to do a little bit of work to the sleeves because um, it's a pretty straight sleeve on this pattern, but it's just a matter of slashing and spreading and really giving yourself full volume. Now the um, Farm Rio top has a piece of bias tape that finishes off the inside. Um, so the a hem of the sleeve, and then there's elastic in there. So um, instead of just folding, you know, like you would with a normal blouse, folding it, you know, hemming it basically, and then putting your um, elastic through, it used bias tape to finish that off so it wouldn't be as thick. Because Gipure lace is the thicker, uh, more corded lace um, to finish off that inside edge, and then there was elastic that ran through there. So that's how the actual Farm Rio top is finished off, because again, I did see that. And for the fabric, I have found this beautiful Gapure lace from uh, the fabric store. It, this is a little bit um, dustier pink than what the ac you know the actual top is a little bit more pink. Um, this has a little bit of a lighter pink, a little bit more grayed pink, but I think you would definitely get the same look and it would be a whole lot of fun to play around with. I actually have some cotton Gapure lace from the fabric store that I bought years ago and like a bright cobalt blue that might be kind of fun to play around with. I just can't get away with dartless tops. Um, and when you're doing a dart and a lace, I mean, you can do it. In fact, I've even taken like a Susan Calgie class on how to do that. It's just uh, fiddly. It's a lot. I mean, it's work. So um, anyway, and they're, and they do turn almost invisible, but I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's a challenge I want to take this year. I don't know, but that it is a really fun idea and would be a whole lot of fun. And the top itself is pretty easy to do. Um, so I think that would be fun to play around with. All right, look eight. 
is, and I think this is another Zimmer Zimmerman dress. Now, this, it's a shirt dress, and while it's not a drop waist dress, because of that low seam line for that ruffle, because there actually, I think, is a, a waist there underneath the belt, um, it gives the illusion a little bit of kind of that drop waist. So this would be great if you're someone that has a normal length torso, and you would like still to accentuate your waist a little bit, but you still want to nod to that drop waist trend, this would be a great way to try that out. I love a drop waist because I have a very short torso, so anything drop waist on me actually elongates my torso and makes me look more proportioned um, because I am short torsoed with longer legs, using longer very loosely because I'm only 5'2", um, but my body proportions. So when I do a drop waist where a, a seam, a horizontal seam is hitting below my natural waist, that makes my torso look a little bit longer and puts my legs back into proportion with my body. So I love a good drop waist, but I know that not everyone does. <laughs> um, but this would be a great way to do that nod. And handily enough, Mimi G has basically the pattern for this dress. It is uh, Simplicity 9463. And um, there's two versions. There's one without the ruffle and one with the ruffle. But guys, it honestly is the same dress. Um, when I was looking for a dupe, I'm like, oh, well, Mimi G also saw this saw this same dress and wanted to recreate it because it is very similar. Uh, and for the fabric, I found this beautiful linen from uh, Mood Fabrics that had that same nod to, to me. Kind of that antique -y colors um, in that linen um, against kind of a, not white, it seems a little bit more creamier background. Um, but I thought, I mean, you really could do a dupe, a uh, complete dupe on that dress and just recreate. Um, and I'm not even sure how expensive that was was, but it was on Net-a-Porte, net porte so I'm sure it was a, I mean, sure it's a very expensive dress, but you could make it for a lot less, and, and then it would fit you perfectly, because we sew, and that's what we do. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was too good, that, um, that those two went together. Okay, next up is this peplum blouse. Now, um, and this is currently, I'm trying to remember where I saw this, what store I can't remember, but it's a top that's currently being sold in one of the um, high-end, like, um, um, clothing stores right now. Not high-end, but more than I want to pay for a top kind of um, type stores. I was looking at a whole bunch of different ready-to-wear um, shops to pull inspiration pictures. Um, and I do have a link to the Pinterest board if you want to take all these back to their um, origin. Um, if you want to shop them or whatever, um, I do have a link to that Pinterest board in the description box. So all these inspiration pictures can be taken back to their origin from there. I love a peplum top, though, because I am very straight through my waist and hips, and anything that accentuates, accentuates the weight, oh my gosh, that accentuates my hips, helps balance my hips with my bust and makes me not look nearly as top-heavy. So I love a good peplum, and then in turn, it kind of makes me look like I actually have a waist, which is wonderful. <laughs> So I love a good peplum top. Now, um, I couldn't find an exact dupe as far as a peplum top, but what's wonderful about peplum tops is what they are, are basically a dress with a really short skirt. <laughs> so um, for the pattern on this, so I was looking more for the details like in the bodice and then that kind of waist piece. Um, I came across the Style Arc Bell Woven Dress. Um, and it is basically, um, it, the only difference is that this has buttons up the front and the um, dupe top does not. But I mean, you could very I, honestly, I think the buttons would be more helpful because then you could put the shirt on a little bit easier. I don't know how this ready-to-wear one goes on. Maybe a side zip. Um, I hate side zips, but that's possibly how it goes on and off. So I honestly think the buttons would be easier. But I would just make this dress and then just make the skirt really short um, so that it's a peplum top instead of a dress. Uh, and for the fabric, I found this um, cotton lawn, I believe, from Mood that kind of gives a nod. It's kind of that periwinkly blue color. It's floral, um, but not um, a little bit softer of a floral. So, but I think the cotton lawn would give you enough body in the sleeve to give you that same look that the inspiration picture has as well. All right, and then finally, look 10. Oh, I really want to create this look. I think it's so good. So basically, um, this is from Bowdoin. The pants are ponty, but they're a trouser. So they have a functioning zip fly, waistband, pockets, the whole nine yards, um, a little bit wider leg that you can tell. And then she just has it on with a cream sweater over a button-up shirt. 
and then the trench coat. So I've only picked patterns and fabric for the trench coat and the pants because, you know, any cream sweater and button-up shirt in your stash would, or in your wardrobe would work for the top part of this. Um, but I really want to create this look. So for the trench coat, um, I have a few trench coat patterns and there's quite a few out there. But for the sake of this video, I have gone with McCall's can't read it. <laughs> McCall's 8246. It's just, it comes in a couple of different lengths, um, but it's kind of your traditional trench coat pattern. So this would be a great one to use for, um, to recreate a trench coat of your own. And the fabric, I've gone with this um, cotton gabardine from Minerva. And I'm trying to remember now, it's a designer fabric as well from Minerva. Um, this is a little bit warmer brown, but it did come in a couple of quite a few different colors. Uh, this is exactly what a trench coat is. I mean, cotton gabardine is what trench coats are made out of. So it would be a perfect um, fabric to grab to create your own lookalike trench coat. And then for the pants, we're going to get kind of creative. I really want these pants in my wardrobe. I have chosen the Itch to Stitch North Point Trousers. Now, I have made these before, as is, um, in a Ponte. They're meant for stretch woven, but I have made them in a Ponte. Um, to be honest, the Ponte was a little drapier than it should have been for the pattern. Because, um, again, the pattern actually calls for stretch woven. So I was kind of stepping out on a limb using a Ponte. But I have recently used the, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's the Ponte from Minerva comes in like 29 different colors, and I use the um, chartreuse for a pattern test that I'm working on right now. So I'm very familiar with the beef and the weight and the hand of it, um, and I think it would make fabulous Ponty trousers. So I would do the North Point trousers in this Ponty, um, and I've picked for this one, I think it's called Carrot Orange. It's a little bit warmer orange, because they also have a color that's just orange. Um, but the I think they do have a red, but it was a little bit cooler red, and I wanted something that was a bright pop. So I went the orange, but again, there's 29 different colors. You could pick whatever color you want um, in this, and then you're going to need a little bit wider leg. I think what I would do is just put the Upton, um, or Upton, the Upland trouser leg um, up to this pant pattern and just trace the Upland leg, because I love the Upland leg, the shape of it. Um, and I live the length and all of that. So I think I would just make the North Point trousers, but then starting at like the crotch on the North Point and like low hip, then trace the uplands so that it's that same shape of leg. Um, and then keep everything the same with the North Point from the crotch point up. Um, and I think I could get a really close dupe for, um, for this, this lookalike. Um, and again, that Ponty is just perfect. Um, for, I think it would make a really great pair of, you know, your standard trousers because it's a little bit thicker and it doesn't have quite the amount of stretch as some ponties do. Um, but that can be good. The beefier ponties can definitely be good. Um, they hold their structure a little bit more. Um, so that is one that I would highly recommend if you are wanting to do pants. So there we have it, guys. Those are my 10 spring ready-to-wear looks um, and some patterns and fabrics so you can recreate your own. So hopefully this is timely for you if you're starting to think about um, sewing for the warmer weather. I always am in the mood to sew sundresses in February, so as we're getting really close to that, um, I am looking forward to, um, yeah, starting to, to sew a little bit more brighter colors. I have a couple of things I'm still working on for winter that will go into my, um, spring capsule. Um, just kind of things to round off my wardrobe a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm ready to start doing some spring sewing. On that note, if you have, um not signed up for my newsletter. You're going to want to sign up for my newsletter. So today is February 2nd that you're watching this and it is my birthday month. And I am going to be giving a little bit of a gift to my newsletter subscribers um, for my birthday week. So um, if you've not subscribed to the newsletter, you're definitely want to go, going to go ahead and go over there and do that. I will link um, to the newsletter um, down below, but you can just go to my website, which is tomcatstitchery.com, and there's a, a button there at the top where you can also um, click on that to sign up for the newsletter as well. So um, that is something to look forward to, uh, you know, as we're getting into the February month um, of my birthday month. So definitely make sure you're subscribed. All right, guys, that is all I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. I hope you get some sewing in this weekend, and I will see you guys again on Tuesday. Bye.